Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is the Code Daily Challenge, day 30 of the August, the Code Daily Challenge. Second to last day, let's go, let's get started. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, join me in Discord. And today's form is largest component size by common factor. Um, okay. So I, I feel like I've seen this before. Uh, okay. I think you could do this with DP. Because. Wow, what is all this stuff? Oh, I think I misunderstood this actually. Um, I think you just do union fine, right? Uh, because this is connected components and you could add it, you know, you could hmm. You can just keep on adding things to component. So the thing that I'm hesitating a little bit is Try to figure out how to uh, Do this in a way that is an n-square because uh, for 20,000 n-square is gonna be too slow. So So then so you can't just be like, okay, here's a four, here's a six, that, and then you go iterate all the way back. But I think the one thing that I now realize is that um, the nodes on the graph, and this takes me a little bit, so I'm a little bit slower. <laughs> I just wasn't prepared. But uh, yeah, so for each number, we can factor the number. And then, so basically the nodes, so you have this graph, but let's ignore it, right? So the actual graph is between all the prime factors uh, under uh, 100,000, right? So for example, you have prime factor 2, 3, 5, uh, 7, 11, 13, and so forth, dot, 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 right? And and then these are all your kind of... Um, these are all the numbers that kind of... I don't know, like... How do I say this? So these are just the numbers, right? Um, and uh, they're prime factors, meaning that if they're just going to be common factors between two numbers. And there's an edge between two primes if a number connects them, right? For example, the 6, right? 6 connects to 2 and the 3 uh, because uh, 6 is just 2 times 3. And therefore, every number that's in, that has a 2 as a factor and every number that has a 3 as a factor, now they're married together. So, so yeah, so that's how I'm going. I think I, that's the way to do it. And because of that, uh, and because the biggest number is like a hundred thousand, so there, at most there's about like I don't know sixteen factors or something like that. There's actually probably less, but that's just an upper bound. Uh, so then the, the so that means that at most um, you just for each number uh, you're only going to look at sixteen different numbers, right? So this is just n times sixteen roughly speaking. So that's kind of my back of the envelope math, and that's how I'm going to start um, solving this problem. Um, yeah. How, and uh, so that's the, how I would attack this problem in terms of algorithm. Uh, but now I'm trying to think about the implementation detail as well. Uh, I could probably do union fine, uh, and I think I will do that. So... So yeah, I think I'm just going to do union find. Uh, usually, union find you used an array or whatever, but now I'm going to just have a have a dictionary so that certain things um, certain things are just uh, a little bit easier. So yeah. Um, I guess that's all you need, right, for union find. But yeah, I don't know that I've uh, maybe I've solved similar problems before, but it's a while, so I don't remember this. But uh, so that union A B, I always do uh, well, we also have U union fine of A. So if parent A is not equal to, or if return you find of parents of a kind of um, return parents of a and then now um, ua is equal to you find of a ub is equal to you find of b 
um, and I don't generally do all, any of the comp. Uh, I mean, I do path compression as you see, but I don't do the. Um, I don't. I don't do uh, the by rank on union. Uh, maybe I should, but I generally just keep it as simple as I can. Uh, okay, so now for x in a. So this is the number, and then now we want to factorize the number, right? Um, hmm, do I want to do the, how do I want to factor the number? Um, yeah, I guess we just go straight up. Uh, y is equal to 2, while x mod y is equal to um, Having something like this, uh, or bigger than one. Uh, what? Why is it equal to zero? Do, do, do. Mm, okay, maybe I do an if. If this is the case. Um, <coughs> so yeah, so answer, uh, mm, factors, let's say, is equal to a list. So, yeah, so factor dot or factors dot append y, and then we do a while x. Uh, so, this should get rid of that, and then at the very end, we just increment by one. So, this should give us the prime factors, right? So, then now we just do a union on the on each of the factors adjacent, right? So, for a, B in uh, sip of factors and factors of one. So this just gives us adjacent uh, elements. And then it's just union A, B, right? Actually, I did mess this up a little bit. I think I need to keep track of the size. So I was wrong on that one. Maybe. Hmm. Huh. How do I think about this? So I so this will give us the the, the number of components for sure. Um. But I think I I messed up in that I don't um keep track of the size of the largest component. How do I get the largest component? Hmm. I guess we just have to uh, keep track of keep track of uh, what the parent is again of this. So we have to keep track for each number. Um, are these all unique? I guess they're not distinct. So that's actually a little bit more annoying. But because we just have to keep track of uh, what. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. I just do count as your collection is that default dictionary, maybe, and then just use this first factor. Um, so count of factors sub zero is someone like that, um, maybe. Is that right? Hmm. Yeah, okay. And then now we can do something like for key and count dot keys. Um, is this right? Basically, this gives us the first factor, which allow us to get a uh, union fine of the thing. So, okay, yeah, okay. So then now we just do, because uh, we have to aggregate it once more at the end. So uh, final count is equal to collections. Maybe I should use counter also. 
uh, just to keep it consistent. And final count, which is the sum of the stuff uh, of. So now we want to find of key is equal to uh, count of key, something like that. Um, and then, and then now we get the max. Yeah. Okay. For key and final count dot keys. Um, so best is equal to zero. Best is equal to max of best final count key, and then we turn best. Someone like that. Uh, we'll see if that actually works. Uh, okay, that works for that case, but that doesn't. I don't know. That just seems like you know we should at least test more examples. Uh, that's at. But that case is also every number, so that's a little bit uh, not great. Uh, let me double check. So what is the one case? I think I don't do the one very well. Uh, okay, so I also have a wrong answer, so that's maybe good. Um, hmm. Okay, let's just print count after this. I mean, the logic is roughly right, but I think I'm just being a little silly. Uh, so this is three, this is also three. These are two, so two and three, but then why is this four? Uh, you find of key. Hmm, let's see. I know countdown. Please don't show me for saying. Mm, oh, I am dumb. This is not quite right. Um, I mean, I know what it should be, but and I don't think default. Take let's just do that. Okay, fine. Um. Mm, okay. If a not in parent, parent sub a is equal to a. Okay. All right, that looks good. I actually don't know what's the answer with one uh, or how to handle it. Uh, I think maybe I could just read the problem a little bit better, to be honest, but uh, yeah. Why is this give me a... Oh, because there's no factors. Okay. Uh, if... That's a good check though. Factors greater than zero. Factors because I can't spell. Okay, so that looks okay. Uh, let's remove the print statement because sometimes it leads to bad things. And let's give it a go. I think, unless I have like some weirdness, I think the algorithm should be okay. Unless it times out, that would be a little bit sad. Hmm. That is a little bit sad because this should be fast enough. Uh, let's see. This. I think actually it should be fast enough, but I think this is I just did something silly. Um, hmm. I think my loop is just wrong. Uh, so if y is greater than x, y is equal to x, maybe. Let's try that. Because I think I that loop looks a little bit weird, but maybe I'm just slow to be honest. Um. Okay, so it was too slow. Why is that? Hmm. That's actually surprising. To be honest. Hmm. Huh. I mean, to be honest, I, I'm a little bit surprised unless my... Maybe it's just this calling the parent thing uh, and using a dictionary. Hmm. 
still pretty confident about it, but why did I mean maybe it's just too slow on on the code. I'm just going to see if I remove certain things to see if it's fast enough. Uh, I mean, obviously, this may le or will lead to incorrect answers, but um, like, for example, if we don't do union and it's still too, too uh, slow, then that means that there's something fundamentally wrong with uh, different parts of the thing. So that's why, like, for example, now we have time limit exceeded still. So it's not the union find that we're having issues with. Uh, it's, some, it's this thing, probably. Um... But can we do better? Oh, I am just silly. So this should be something like, uh, this should go to, uh, I guess I just haven't done this in a while, uh, at least in Python. So this should be something like, um, something like that. And then we'll do some maths around uh, the last x. Uh, let's just see if it runs fast enough though. Okay, so it does run fast enough. I'm just being dumb. Uh, a little bit out of practice, but that's okay. Uh, so if x is greater than 1, factors that append x. Whew. Sometimes you write something thousands of times, but you still could get it a little bit silly. Uh, okay, so that looks good. Let's submit again. Um, wow, yeah, I don't know why I did the linear uh, from 1 to whatever. But yeah, so that looks good. Uh, I think in my mind, it, you, sometimes you just do it enough times that you just get blind by a little bit. And usually I write this in a different language. Um, so in Python, I think my mind just didn't think about it in a good way, um, which happens. And that's why we have to test our assumptions. Uh, but yeah, so what is the complexity of this algorithm? Um, so it's going to be... Um, like I said, this is going to be dominated by the factor. Uh, so actually, uh, I was wrong a little bit with sixteen times whatever. Though that's that's the comp that's the complexity of this component, the union component. But the factorization seems to be the longest time. This is square root of x for whatever x is, which is this, which is um. So it's going to be like what is it three hundred? So three hundred times twenty thousand. Um, in the worst case. And then the union finds actually not the dominating part, which maybe is a little bit surprising, but I just didn't realize. Um, and of course, I could have tested by just generating random numbers, but um, I was just a little bit lazy for the stream. Uh, that's okay, though. Now I'm here to learn. Uh, but yeah, so depending on how you want to define it, this is linear time because the union is some Ackerman or reverse Ackerman or inverse Ackerman inverse Ackerman function uh, or constant or something like that. Uh, well, this, um, depending on how you want to phrase it, is either constant or O of x, uh, where, you know, the bound is a ten, uh, 100,000, so square root of 110,000. Uh, so that could be constant. Um, and I just do some tallying math. You could have probably have done this as part of the, uh, the unioning, but I wanted to see if I could do something a little bit different. Um, don't know if I recommend it to be honest, but yeah, hope a fun, tricky problem. But uh, yeah, and of course it's linear space because we just keep track of a hash table. So yeah, let me know what you think. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, join me on Discord. This is a little bit tricky. Uh, I think the hardest part about this problem is that um, you know you have to remember your 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 prime numbers and factorizations and how to kind of get them in one good place uh, because definitely um, even the implicit graph it it could be you know, n square, right? So you have to figure out another graph that uh, you can construct, and that's what I did here with the factors, and then having the, instead of, um, so like, you know, a, a common way is like, okay, say like two and a six have an edge because they, you know, the GCF is two, right? But, or greatest common factor is two. But the other way of looking at it is, like I said, the prime numbers, uh, this, six squares and edge between two and three. Um, I don't know how easy it is. Uh, for me, it's just experience. So I don't know, play around with it. Uh, let me know what you think and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.